Photokina just wrapped up and there was a mountain of new camera announcements. And when you consider the new announcements from Canon and Nikon a couple weeks before the show, there's about a billion new cameras to deal with. But to be honest, I'm getting a little tired of all the new camera announcements. Aren't we just getting tired of minor incremental updates that promise to do something a little bit better than the camera that we already have? It's a constant cycle of buying and rebuying and rebuying. And I for one have had just about enough of it. The camera I have is good enough and it's going to continue to be good enough for the foreseeable future. I'm just going to start taking pictures. I've got a camera. It's perfectly good. That's all I need to worry about. So that's it. Just kidding, don't worry, I still like cameras. It's actually a whole thing for me. I, I love the act of taking pictures, but I also love the gear. I'm fascinated by the incremental upgrades. I'm fascinated by the little things that manufacturers can do to make their gear better and better and better and sort of approach the perfect tool. I'm into it. So yeah, there was a ton of cameras that came out, but the one that I really want to talk about is the Fuji X-T3. There's a ton of things that have been improved with the X-T3, but a few really stand out for me. Right off the bat is this fantastic 3.69 million dot EVF. The X-T series of cameras have always had fantastic EVFs, but the EVF on the X-T3 is a showstopper. Like I said, 3.69 million dots, 100 frames per second refresh rate, 0.75 times magnification. Every year there's gonna be a new EVF that's a little bit better than the one before, but this one's like a, a huge step forward. And especially if you look at the EVF in the X-T2, which I always thought was super contrasty and a little oversaturated. Plus when you were looking at the EVF on the X-T2, you could see the individual pixels if you looked really closely. This takes all that away. This is like looking through a window. This is like the same kind of effect that you would get now if you were looking through a DSLR with a mirror. There is nothing to complain about. It's a great little EVF. You're gonna love it. What else we got? Oh, it's got this crazy new sports finder mode. Fuji's calling it a sports finder. What they're doing basically is, you know how Sony cameras have the APS-C mode where you can punch in and just take the image from the center of the sensor? Fuji's doing the same thing in the sports mode. So you're getting a lower resolution image, but the EVF is showing the full resolution of the sensor and then the area that is cropped is marked with a little box. Sounds an awful lot like a rangefinder or an optical viewfinder in a Leica system. And it's a thing that Leica guys always go on about. I like to be able to see what's going to enter the frame before it enters the frame. It helps my mind's eye. Whatever. You can use that mode in this camera and it's kind of nifty. All right. It's kind of, it's a, it's a proof of concept, I'll say. It's very interesting to see that you can do that. It has a couple of drawbacks. We've trained our mind to know that what we're looking through the camera is the EVF. So suddenly the EVF isn't the EVF and I'm constantly was struggling. Oh, what am I actually focusing on? What is my frame? It would take a little bit to get used to it. Number one. Number two, you kind of have to go down a size in lenses. So if you wanted the 35 millimeter field of view, you couldn't really use the 23 anymore. You sort of, use the 18 and then the area in the middle is approximately the 35 millimeter field of view. But again, then you see the full 18 millimeter field of view in the EVF. You got to make that mental switch. I struggled with it. I, I mean, when they first announced this camera, I was like, wow, that's the coolest feature I've ever heard of. And then I tried it and I was like, oh, this isn't great. But it's there. I mean, this really shows how Fuji is pushing the envelope of how cameras can behave in our hands. And it speaks very well for them as a company that they would even try something like this. Good on you, Fuji, like it. Battery life, there's been a lot of talk on Fuji's decision to keep the NPW126S batteries of the X-T3. And you kind of have to think, you know, this would have been the right time because this feels like the launch point for the next generation of their cameras. This would have been the right time to introduce a new battery system. What they've done instead is they've introduced a new power optimized processor. They've optimized the power settings on the camera. And you know, it's not that the battery life is bad on this camera, cause it's not, it's fine from a year ago. But now we've got the Sony a7 III and we've got the Sony a7R III. And these cameras last for fricking ever on a single battery. They're two battery cameras, this is a four or five battery camera. So this is sort of like your expectation of digital cameras from a year or two years ago is where this is gonna be. It doesn't make it bad battery life, but it doesn't live up to the standard of something like an a7 III. 
I gotta wonder why Fuji didn't introduce a new battery this time around. I'm sure there's reason for it. At some point, they're going to have to come up with a new bigger battery. I don't know when that's gonna be, but as it stands, there's nothing to sing about in terms of battery life, but there's nothing to complain about either. It's batteries. If you're worried about battery life, get more batteries. All right, let's talk about the whole, let's talk about the whole made in China thing. The camera is made in China. I mean, well, I mean, it's not made in China, it's assembled in China. All accounts are that the parts are all from the same manufacturers as previous versions of the XT or X series cameras. They haven't really changed that, but it's being put together in China and it's a cost saving measure. I mean, it doesn't make it crappy. It's still being built to Fuji's standards in a plant in China, but it's one of the things that they've done to keep the cost in this camera down. This camera is under 1500 bucks US. I mean, for everything that it does, that's amazing. And one of the things they had to do in order to make that happen is have the camera being assembled in China. Nothing about this camera feels cheap. It's solid with no wiggly bits, nothing creaks or groans. It just happens to be in China. It's not a big deal. But still, I'm like, yeah, I'm in China. <laughs> Honestly though, you just gotta get over that. It's just the reality. In order to keep costs down, they've chosen to assemble this camera in China. It's really, it's a non-issue. It's just the way it is. Next, one thing that has always been good about the X-Series cameras from Fuji is the shutter sound. They've really paid attention to making discrete sounding shutters that are not gonna draw a lot of attention to themselves. I was really critical of the a7 III shutter. It's loud and clunky. Listen, that's it. Gah! The camera's loud, so. But listen to this. Oh, did you hear that? Here, my mic's right here. Compared to the Sony, this is like whisper quiet. Shh. And the other thing is, this is like a proper shutter. It's a proper switch. You can half press and get to the point where the thing's gonna fire. And then you can feel the switch. You can feel the switch firing. All in all, this is a far superior shutter system to the Sony, which you know has that mushy button and it's loud and clunky. This is a lovely... Now I've got, in all fairness, I've got my typical soft release on here. The second I get a Fuji in my hand, I'm like, soft release, please. Because their shutter button placement is in, in a spot where you benefit from having it raised up just a little bit. But that's this is just an accessory, you don't really need it. It comes with an electronic first curtain mode, which gives it an even quieter sound and reduces the amount of blackout that you see when you're looking through the EVF. It's just a joy. After shooting for with the Sony for six months, this is like, ah, oh, this is where I wanna be. It's good. Shutter, great. Love it. Quiet. Schlinkity. Let's talk about video. It's more important than you might think. I'm a street photographer, so what do I care about video? Well, I have to know, I, I, I mean, listen, I do this stuff for the blog. I have this interest in, in short form documentary stuff that I sort of dabble with and sort of getting more and more of my attention as time goes on. But I have to know wherever I am, if I need to shoot a video when I'm there, I don't wanna lug around an extra gear to do that. It's good to know that the camera that I have with me can perform on par with anything that I would bring with me. I'm filming this on the Sony a7 III as an example. I'm not shooting the street with it today. It's my video camera today. This could step into that role just as easily with a couple of key differences. The X-T3 on paper is so much better than the a7 III. It's the first APS-C size camera, mirrorless camera to shoot 4K 60p in camera. It's got the Eterna film profile, which is a great general purpose movie profile that gives you lots of dynamic range without having to go crazy in post and grading stuff all over the place. You can pick up this camera and get excellent quality video from it like that, but you can also delve deeper. You can shoot F-Log in camera if you really wanted to grade it in post. You can get a lot more creative if you need to. To know that I could actually shoot a professional job on this camera, without anyone batting an eye at the results, Fuji has hit this one out of the park. It doesn't have built-in IBIS. It doesn't have image stabilization built into the camera. If that's the one complaint that video shooters have, that's fine. Put it on a gimbal, put it on a tripod. This is a stills camera first, but I'd be really happy to know that if I needed to shoot a video, if I'm in LA and I'm meeting up with a friend and he's talking about something interesting, I can pull out the camera and document whatever I happen to be seeing on video as well as in stills 
and never have to question, never have to think, ah, the quality's not gonna be that great. This is a professional level video camera packed into a professional level stills camera. Welcome to 2019. Is it year? 2018? Whatever year it is. I haven't really talked about AF that much and this camera has fantastic AF. What has it got? 2.16 million phase detect pixels and 425 AF points that extend right to the edge of the frame. It can focus in low light down to minus three EV down, like that's even lower, the X-T2 I believe was minus one. I'm not someone who's gonna use autofocus on the street. I'm just not. When I'm shooting street, we all know I, I do the, the faux zone focus technique where I use the autofocus motors to set the lens at its hyperfocal distance and shoot like I don't need to focus on anything. That's my style of shooting. But if I'm shooting video stuff, then the AF really comes into play. And this has class leading AF. This is, this is top of the line in every possible way. If you wanna shoot AF, holy crap, it's fast. And the thing, the thing that's really weird, especially if you're using one of Fuji's newest lenses with the newest motor technology, it's almost like looking at something. You know, if you look at something and you change your focus distance, by the time your brain is cognizant of what you're looking at, it's already in focus. That's how this feels to me. It's not like you move a focus point and it goes, yeah. No, it's just like, oh, now it's in focus. Oh, now it's in focus. This is a, a really responsive and fast moving system. That's the end result of every Fuji that has come before it. Fuji's nailed it on the AF as well. Image quality, let's just jump right into this here. Just as I was about to shoot this review, Lightroom finally updated with Fuji X-T3 RAW file support. And no surprises there, everything looks great. You know, picture quality is a super subjective thing that words don't really convey very well. You kind of have to look at the stuff yourself. But I can see that these files have the same lovely open shadows while still maintaining contrast in the shadows that I've come to love from Fuji X-Trans sensors. That's all in there. The colors are punchy and vibrant without looking unrealistic. Reds are controlled nicely. All in all, image quality does not disappoint from this camera, but don't take my word for it. Here's a bunch of pictures I took with the X-T3. Have a look for yourself. Okay, standard disclaimer about image quality. Don't judge the image quality of any camera by looking at super compressed videos on YouTube. If you do that, you're missing the point of photography altogether. Do yourself a favor, head over to streetshooter.com, check out the full written review. There's full size sample pictures there. You could see exactly what the image quality is gonna be like. Use this as a starting point. Go there, look at it, picture quality. Full size samples, street shooter. It was only a few years ago that Fuji's AF and video performance were way behind everyone else. Do you remember the X-Pro1? I mean, seriously, do you remember the X-Pro1? It was awful, but Fuji as a company has focused its attention and has been refining their products generation after generation, and the X-T3 is the net result of all of that work. This is a camera that a lot of people are saying is the best APS-C camera on the market. But I'd go one step further. I, I'd argue that this is approaching the status of best all around camera. Like I know this is gonna get the full frame people up in arms, but I didn't say this has the best image quality or the best low light performance or the best AF or the best video. But when you consider everything this camera does, I don't see anything that even comes close, especially at this price point. This is like mind boggling that they can do this much for this little. Fuji guys are gonna to wanna to snap this one up right away. If you're new to the Fuji ecosystem, this is a great time to hop on board. This camera might look like an X-T2 on the outside, but like the old saying goes, it's what's inside that counts. This feels like they took an X-T2 and said, how, okay, how can we make this better in every possible way? And then went ahead and did just that. Would I recommend this camera? Definitely. Just like the Sony a7 III was a huge leap forward in terms of quality and performance and what the camera could do when it was released six months ago or however long that was ago, 
this is Fuji's answer to that. It's still a Fuji at its core, but it's definitely the ultimate Fuji to date. If you like this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. There's plenty of new videos coming up. I want you to see every last one of them, but for now, I'm Carl from Street Shooter and that's enough of me. Now get out there and take some pictures already with a Fuji camera, maybe a silver X-T3. It's got that schlinkity. Can you hear this? Hold on. Oh, I'm in movie mode. Hold on.